Wizards of the Coast has just announced that they have made the decision to suspend all in-store gameplay in both America and Latin America. <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about the new announcement Wizards of the Coast just made today saying that they are going to go ahead and shut down in-store play specifically for America and Latin America. And we're going to talk as well overall what this means for the health of the game. Is this the end of paper magic? That sort of thing, right? So first things first, let's take a look at the announcement itself and then we'll break it down from there. So posted today on the WPN, which if you didn't know, is the Wizards Play Network. That's where all the stores are members of to be able to be part of Wizards different events. So they released this to the store saying, after reviewing feedback from Corset 2021 pre-release, conferring with our retail advisory panel, and above all, considering the safety of the community, we've made the difficult decision to place in-store play under suspension in the United States and Latin America. Now it's interesting to note, when I first read this, I was like, wait a minute, so it doesn't apply to us here in Canada? So I guess in Canada, we're still gonna be able to play in store unless they expand it. Now, admittedly, what's going on obviously is tied into the worldwide situation we've been dealing with for a number of months, requiring masks and all of that, right? But in Canada, we have a smaller population than America, about 10% of the size, roughly. And we have a massive country, like Canada's bigger than America and we have way fewer people. So aside from some particular like hot spots where we are, you know, like Toronto, like really big cities, which there's only a few like really major cities in Canada anyway. So those places are definitely more impacted, but overall we're not having the same level of issue here. So I guess that means for the time being, we still have the advantage of being able to go out to the LGSs. Now, admittedly, the LGSs in our area have been pretty cautious, limiting it to a, you can only have a few people in here and we're gonna have all this space, right? Like before, it was as many people as you want to come to these events. Now they tend to be limited to eight man events, which it makes perfect sense, right? You've got to approach this with caution. So the, the statement continues, remote play events remain available in event link, but any in-store events scheduled will be automatically canceled and removed from the store and event locator. That's actually convenient. I said we we're gonna comment on this at the end, but I guess I'm just gonna do it as we go as well. <laughs> so uh, what happens, at least under Wizards old system, I, I don't know if it's changed with the tickets or whatever, but I believe it works the same way. If you don't report your event within a certain amount of time, it would be considered delinquent and your delinquency rate would determine like how much Wizards would do certain things with you in terms of higher level events and whatever but i think they changed the system to if you don't report your event within a week they just cancel it out and you don't get credit for running the event so i guess that's the penalty now i don't know i'm more familiar with the old event reporter so it says we realize that this decision has important implications across the entire magic ecosystem it sure does we also realize the state of the pandemic varies wildly around the globe and that the situation is in a constant state of flux. So we want to be as clear as we can about our plans going forward. Here's what you need to know. The suspension is temporary, but it will last through the Zendikar Rising pre-release. So we'd love to provide a timeline for the return of in-store play, but this would be too vulnerable to disruption. This is actually understandable. Not being able to specifically pin down when you're going to be able to return to this makes absolute sense and let's be real way more people are at home right now people are bored they're unhappy we're all more likely to be complainy i mean i've noticed it in me right like so i i think it's fair to assume looking overall that we have a lot of people who are more dissatisfied and if you give a specific date but aren't able to live up to it some people instead of being adults are going to take the whole like child mentality of you promised this and now you're saying it's different and you're a meanie and a liar you know what i mean so if you just go ahead and say look we we know we're going to do it for this long at least 
We can't pinpoint when we're going to end it. With a scenario like this, that makes sense. We're not talking about secret layer releases and all these other products they're putting out that aren't being released on time or whatever. We're talking about something specifically to deal with people's health, and those are two wildly different matters. So it says we want to uh, basically, sorry, I'm just going to start this paragraph from, from the beginning because I think I missed a part. So we'd love to provide a timeline for the return of in-store play, but this would be too vulnerable to disruption. After all, in-store play was reinstated on June 1st, and by the end of the month, the situation was drastically different. So different that we felt it best to, susp to suspend in-store play again. We want to facilitate stability of play where we can in whatever form makes sense for the foreseeable future. Of course, we want to offer as much information as possible to help our partners adapt. So for now, we can confirm that the suspension will be lifted no sooner than the Zendikar Rising pre-release. The season will offer at home pre-release only. Now, again, I assume this just applies specifically to the United States and Latin America and places, you know, if you live in Japan, or if you live in Canada, then you should still have your pre-release normally. I guess more details will be forthcoming if that's not the case. It says we're monitoring the situation and we'll make monthly updates. More on that below. Until then, we support we support we support we support remote play. We recommend WPN members host remote events, whether via Magic Arena, Magic Online, or Webcam. These can be organized through a combination of Discord. And then they've got a link to instructions on how you can do that for obviously the stores. Over the course of the pandemic, so much of our lives has migrated to the web. If magic communities can do the same, there are many wonderful, meaningful experiences to be had. The same kind of experiences that have kept the community vibrant and thriving for more than 25 years. We also want you to know we're currently working towards additional tools and resources to refine the remote play experience. We can't wait to show you. Stay tuned for more details. Now, in terms of tools to refine the remote play experience, I, I'm hoping that they're actually going to come up with software that people can use, or maybe not software, but tools, something to assist people who are playing each other over webcam, right? And like how much, how much do Arena or MTGO like need additional tools or resources to refine the remote play experience, right? Like. Uh, like what else is what else can be done to MTGO and Arena in this scenario? So for me, this sounds like they're going to try to find ways to make paper play digitally more a possibility, and I, that actually I think would be fantastic because the, the the reality is let's be, actually you know what hold on we'll get we'll get to the reality of all that let me get through the announcement and then we'll cover that. So. It says uh, on the second Wednesday, well, they're going to update on a monthly basis starting in September. On the second Wednesday of every month, they'll publish an update on whether they've decided to continue the suspension or lift it for the following month. So it's like it's like a new banned and restricted list. It's just banned and restricted events and stores. <laughs> All right. We will publish the update on this website, even if we choose to take no action. Keep an eye on the weekly WPN update email for this announcement, and I will try and keep you guys apprised of the situation as well. We hope this helps you navigate the disruption and inform, and inform your mitigation plan with the best available information. There's some fancy language. Mitigation is just basically like how you're reducing the negative impact, how you are coping and trying to get back to some semblance of normalcy because at this point, thriving isn't an option. We're in surviving mode, not thriving mode currently overall with what's going on. That's it. So this is this is a harsh reality. This is just something that is necessary. I, In my opinion, I think Wizards is making the right choice to look at different regions of the world, figure out what level of issue they're dealing with, and then make decisions on whether they should be running events or not there. Because let's be real, by them saying, we're not going to do these events, that does impact their bottom line, right? It, it will financially impact them to a degree. If they just said, hey, you know what? Stores can do whatever they want. And if they're allowed to be open, they're allowed to be open. If they're not allowed to be open, they're not allowed to be open. All this sort of thing. They could just wash their hands of it and go, you know what? No. We're uh, we we have nothing to do with this. We're just we're just putting the product out there. 
and they would get to sell more product. That doesn't really feel like anything that can be disputed. So this is the company actually taking steps for what they think is better for the overall health of the players than the health of their bottom line. And I genuinely believe this very rarely happens. I think in a lot of ways, Wizards of the Coast can be a very greedy company. And I think it's important to be fair and point out the times where, hey, you know what? This ain't a bad thing that they're doing. It's not It's not the best, but what's going on in the world isn't the best, right? Like, I get it. I, I have had the luxury of being able to go back to my LGS for the last number of weeks, and it's nice. It does add a sense of normalcy to your life. It is great to go and have to, uh, not have to, have, to have the ability to go down there and to just crack jokes, talk about magic, just be in that comfortable, normal environment. That is nice. So I definitely feel for the people who are not going to get to play in the events. At the, uh, on the upside, at least the product is still available for sale. We had the previous scenario where it just pushed back everything with Ikoria and we had to wait forever for that and the stores were closed. At least in this scenario, you'll still be able to pop into the store, pick up pre-release kits, and enjoy the set when it comes out. Now, in terms of like what this means for the overall health of the game, obviously anything that impacts people's ability to go out and play physical magic is a bad thing for the bottom line of the company. Now, I know there are people out there who are like saying Wizards is keen to push everybody into digital, but that's not logical. There's way too much money in paper magic for them to not want paper magic to continue. And on top of that, no LGSs need to exist for paper to be a relevant product for Wizards of the Coast to sell. And by that I mean, LGSs are amazing. Let's not, let's not get it twisted. However, they are, again, another level of luxury. Not everybody has access to an LGS. In fact, I'm guessing the majority of Magic players don't have access to an LGS. And they're just playing with stuff that they've picked up at their Walmart, their Target, they've ordered online, just playing at home, kitchen table, whatever it is, take it out to the bar, have a couple of rounds or whatever. But the majority of paper magic playing doesn't occur in LGSs. And LGSs all going under would not affect Wizards of the Coast paper sales enough to dictate that they stop it and go, oh, this isn't making us money. So if you're worried about paper magic going away, that's not going to happen. No matter what happens, even if Wizards comes out with software for like webcam games, nothing is going to compare to sitting down with your friends and just playing Magic. There's nothing finer than that. The, the, the digital stuff just can't, it can't measure up. I mean, play Arena for a while and you'll see what I'm talking about. After a while, you don't really feel like you're playing against people at all. It's just like a different name slapped on the AI you're playing against. It really doesn't feel... There, most of the humanity has been pulled out of Arena in terms of the interaction. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I'm saying Arena's a bad product, but Arena can't give you the human aspect, the interaction back and forth in the same way. A couple of moats are flickering your mouse over a car. Look at I'm looking at your card. It just, it doesn't, it's not the same, right? You just, you, there, we're missing so much of the depth of the outside the gameplay mechanics. Gameplay mechanics, you can get the same thing physically, arena. But everything else that comes along with it, which is more than you realize until it's taken away, that can't be replaced. There is no replacing that, right? I mean, the webcam experience, can can you halfway get you there? Maybe if you're playing with your friends or whatever, I don't know. But I, I do genuinely feel like as we settle into the new reality, that paper magic will definitely be a part of things going forwards and LGSs will still be running events. So those are my thoughts on the subject. Let me know what you guys think in the comments because I'm interested to hear it and it also helps with the algorithm. Speaking of which, if you hit like and subscribe to the channel, that's also a great way for my channel to grow and look good to Papa YouTube. And if you love what I'm doing here, I have a Patreon where my biggest fans support my work. So if you'd like to join the ranks of the people scrolling by on the screen, head on over to Patreon. Thanks for coming by, everybody. I'll see you all soon. Bye.